Hello everyone, this video comes to you on behalf of ATC India. Whether you are new uh, to ATCs or an experienced trader, everyone is welcome to join in the fun. Artist trading cards are popularly known as ATCs and uh, they are collectible tiny works of art about the same size as our playing cards. They are usually done on card stocks and traded between artists. And they can be about anything and uh, made with any media, materials or techniques. They can be produced as one-of-a-kind originals, which means unique ATCs not based on one theme. And they can be made in editions, which means identical ATCs. And they can be made in series too, which means the ATCs would be based on the same theme, but still would differ from each other. And ATC India plays in editions or series. And that's because the themes are announced for us. And uh, ATCs are uh, just one of many types of art swaps that happen through internet today. Here's just an intro to help the beginners get started. Now let me uh, give you a gist of ATC India. ATC India was started by Rachna Patel of Rachna's Crafty Corner and she hosted it um, on an official blog space called Crazy for ATCs. Then the participants sent their art pieces to the hostess of the month who coordinated and shuffled the pieces received and then sent them back to the new owners. But now, with the little changes made to its mailing part, ATC India takes place on Indian Craft Room or the ICR, an Indian online community for paper crafts. Now the theme is announced on the first of every month and registrations for the month would be open till the seventh. You ought to add your name in the in-links on the theme announcement post. Then on the 15th of that month, uh, Rachna gives the participants their two secret partners to whom the participants would send one ATC each out of the two we make. Now let me introduce you to the conventional rules of ATC. The ATCs must necessarily measure two and a half by three and a half inches or 6 cm by 9 cm which is an universal standard size followed by all ATC artists around the world. But that does not mean they must be rectangular. Any shape um, you want to cut which still coincides with the 2.5 by 3.5 rectangle is acceptable. For example, but then uh, the basic rectangular shape and the format is the lifeblood of the ATC movement but it still depends on you what you want to choose for that particular theme of the month. Uh, ATC base it can either be uh, similar to a two-fold your regular card base or it could just uh, be a plain single piece of card with no opening as such. It's just the front to work on and uh, the back to sign. I will come back to this the third um, is ATCs can be uh, three-dimensional, interactive or simply flat. Three-dimensional in the sense of uh, something like this. Interactive is something like this. Or uh, something simply flat. But be it whatever, the finished card must be thin enough to fit in a small and standard envelope. Yes, once you're done with your ATCs, before you send them out, ATCs must necessarily be inserted into small plastic transparent um, covers um, just to protect the cards uh, from water or uh, from the medium uh, getting smudged. So, these plastic sleeves are a must. And ATCs must not be sold. They are only meant to be exchanged. 
since the whole essence of these tiny works of art is about meeting or knowing many artists and getting exposed to many personal styles. Uh, ATC India are made in two numbers, one each for your two partners. As I said, uh, I would come back to the uh, signing part of it. On the back of the ATC, the artist writes, prints or adheres part or all of the following information as in um, uh, your name, your, uh, the name of your blog, the date as in month and year, the theme for that particular month, your email and the place you reside. Now the next question is what base material should you use? You can use anything that's sturdy enough. What's generally used are cardstocks, but uh, people do use other mediums too. Since I prefer using my scraps, I tend to recycle or upcycle wedding cards, invites, greeting cards, or a um, few cardboard pieces uh, from packaging, etc. There are three ways to get the correct format. First, to cut the support to the right size before you even start working on your piece. For example, these. And uh, second is to work on a large surface and then cut out the size cards from it. You've made a painting on a larger surface and then uh, you could just measure it um, um, to the uh, size of the ATC and you can cut them down. The third is you could use these commercial trading cards. They act as uh, ready-made uh, ATC canvases. And the fourth is to use scraps which has the potential uh, to be used, of course, in terms of sturdiness. Well, beginners are in a dilemma uh, to begin with as to what do we do on the card base or uh, how do we work on it. Initially, artists start with freehand creations, either uh, they draw or paint. But almost any fine arts medium can be put to use on the miniature canvas of an ATC, either alone or combined with others. Uh, here are a few ATCs that I had received um, in the past. You can see this ATC wherein uh, for the size um, and shape, it, it has a scallop circle and um, it has crocheted flowers, it has a chipboard sticker and um, the sentiment is popped up, uh, popped up on uh, pop dots and similarly some uh, stamped images popped up and uh, this base I think it has been uh, recycled um, from some invites maybe and you can go ahead and use stickers too these are uh, fluffy stickers and there's a silhouette used on this ATC and there are these gemstones, fox gemstones of course. And uh, here on this ATC she's used mini laundry clip, just a zari border. On this you can find some quilling done. On this sponge crafts. You can see some ribbon and I think even this sort, the base, even this has been uh, recycled. Oh. And um, even here you have this so lacy flower and you can see how dimensional uh, this is. The sentiments are popped up with the help of pop dots and they look very impressive. And here on this ATC, the theme was to use fabric on our ATCs. It's up to you what you want to use um, on your ATCs. You can um, even go ahead and use charcoal, cartoon, watercolor markers, color pencils, crayons, inks, dotting, sewing, embroidery, collage, photography, calligraphy, and even print. In case uh, you're not in a mood to really work on it you can just print your ATCs here these are my ATCs for the month of November 2011 I have used danglies on them for the first time 
and I'm quite impressed with them. You could use uh, simple threads um, for tassels or uh, metal charms or beads or even uh, fox gemstones hanging off chains or threads etc. And uh, I believe they add a very definite character to your art card. Nothing is impossible if you're ready to work on it till they function the way you want them to. And uh, here are a few ATC tips for you. When uh, creating a card, follow the rule of three, which is including a background, focal image, and an embellishment. This would help you a lot starting as a beginner. Think ATC base to be an uh, ice skating track, so full of options. Just dance on it the way you want to. ATC need not start white. The base can be of any color. And do not take ATCs for granted. Please do not scale down your art that is apt only for bigger projects. On the contrary, think what the small size allows you to do which would not be possible otherwise. Assume a portrait scaled down to this size, you would hardly see the face and uh, that would make the piece uninteresting. So please do not scale down bigger ideas. Just try to dance your way on uh, the small canvas. It's so full of options uh, for fun, freedom and fulfillment. And for your projects, use some good glue. I use Fevy Bond, which is easily available and uh, you can surely be safe and secure. Since these ATCs are small, you can try a new medium or technique um, on these pieces. Most importantly, give these tiny uh, masterpieces your time. Do not be in a haste while working on them. Make them convey you to your partner. Um, one last thing uh, about the ATCs is uh, the risk involved. It's not something big, but still it's something very important. Now that we have a one-on-one -on -one, um, um, exchange of cards without a coordinator, it so happens that you send out your cards, but you do not get cards in return. Before you sign up, see to it that you're committed for that project. Another risk, I won't call it a risk, but still it's uh, up to your understanding. It feels very bad when you um, send out your work of art and you get something in return which you're not very happy with. Basically the quality of the cards. So do not send anything that you would not like to receive in return. Thank you for your time and uh, happy crafting.